What's up everybody? I'm Konosaid and welcome to episode 8 of Chronocast, a PlayStation podcast. Chronocast is a PlayStation exclusive podcast where I talk with my co-host Yemi the Ferret, aka Yemi, about all things PlayStation. Yemi, how are you, dude? I'm good, how are you? Pretty good, pretty good. Uh, busy week for me, but pretty good and I'm quite happy about um, the, the topic this week. Uh, I think we'll have a great show. Yes, I think so too. What have you been playing? Uh, I didn't play anything this weekend, man. Absolutely dun, dun, nothing. Uh... I closed my pool, too. Oh, that, well, you got something done, at least. Yep. I uh, worked a lot on my, uh, like, the, the weeds and stuff like that. Remove everything before the winter. Uh, flowers, cover the flowers, but no games. No games. You played the game of life. Yep, exactly. I played life. Pretty good game. <laughs> Pretty yeah, realistic, yeah. to be honest. Great uh, graphics could use some work, but yeah, sometimes sucks. Sometimes <laughs> sucks, but <laughs> uh, have you played something? Uh, I played uh, the Mega Man, Mega Man Eleven, yesterday. Oh, you lucky bastard! I've been playing uh, the Halloween event for Call of Duty World War Two, which has been fantastic. Yep, you liked it. I I do. I, it's it's great. Have you tried? Very, um... very spooky. You're spooky. The Halloween event, yeah. Yep, I love Spooky. Uh, have you tried uh, the the new PS Plus games? I have them downloaded, but uh, I haven't played them yet. Yep, um, not not a huge fan of the the selection this month, but Friday the Thirteenth maybe I'll try it and on, on in another account. I don't want this game on my list, my trophy list, <laughs> right? Uh, because it's impossible, I think. But it's possible, but it's a, a lot of grind, right? I uh, think it's it's a lot of those stupid online things that you know you have to get real lucky on. Um, I, I actually I didn't even download the other game. I, I forget what it was called. I just I just didn't, I wasn't interested in it. I was reading the description and watching some gameplay. I was like, nah, I'd rather take a swing at Friday Thirteenth. Uh, I just put up the the trophy list right now, and um, j just for the laughs, and uh, somebody <laughs> have the uh, at least. 0.68% clear rate, um, the, the Platinum Trophy, um, the, the artist trophy, I, artist, I mean like the, the most grindy trophy out of them all is play 1000 multiplayer matches as Jason, but you must know that you're not always playing Jason, like you have a mm -hmm. small <laughs> chance of playing him, so uh, super grindy man, super yeah, grindy. It's like one of seven chance, I think, because there's six people who you play with. It's a one in seven chance, and and you have to play one thousand, yeah, matches. That's ridiculous, <laughs> man. I don't know how someone did that, but uh, the hats off to them. Maybe there's some tricks or something like that. There's still one thousand too. I am sure there's some kind of way to fib it. You know, they they get seven people in a party and they join first or something. Who knows? Yeah, exactly. All right, so uh, Chronocast is uh, recorded each and every week on Wednesdays and is uploaded on YouTube on Thursday at 1 p.m. Eastern Time. Uh, the podcast is divided into several segments. Uh, we talk about the news, the new releases, topic of the show, the trophies, as you can uh, see, as you, and a question from the listeners and a PlayStation game uh, from the past, which is called PlayStation Memory. I have to fix that. My intro is all <laughs> fucked up now. Oh, no. I'm, I'm fixing it on the fly, man. So, uh, jumping in the news, the top news of the week. Uh, the first one, not sure if you played this game before, Puppeteer. I did. I, it was actually uh, free on PlayStation 3 back when that was still being supported full-time. Yep, exactly. Uh, this is where I played it, too. And Echo Chrome. Not sure about this one, right? I'm not, yeah, I'm not sure. So, um, Puppeteer... I never... I never played it or heard of it until now you know <laughs> I, I heard the name before but never played it uh, it seems like a weird japanese game uh so puppeteer has been spotted um maybe a revival not sure yet it's all rumors right now but uh puppeteer is a great underrated game um it was uh in the same veins as a uh, little bit planet i would say uh, like floaty characters, a lot of style in the game, but uh, the game sold pretty poorly, so they cancel any sequels. But uh, if they release it on PlayStation 4, I think it will be a great, uh, a great fit. Actually, uh, it's missing a lot of uh, platformers like that. Yeah, uh, it, it could also possibly be a, a VR game, which uh, could be kind of interesting. 
Yep, uh, it could be, could be. Uh, I'm not sure how it would be working though. Uh, especially for property, I can see Echo Chrome being um, a PlayStation VR game, but um, it's more platformer uh, property, so I'm not sure about that. But uh, you're you're the, spe the, the specialist uh, in VR, so. Well, I mean, there is a game that was released this week that is a VR platformer, so we'll we talk about that more uh, later on. Oh, oh, that's exciting, man. So yeah, <laughs> Puppet Gear, a uh, huge fan. I actually played with my son and um, he loved it. It's really stylish. I absolutely love the game. So good for kids too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I do like how it kind of has that same feel as Little Big Planet. You know, you, you kind of cut things out and stuff like that. It's it's cool. God, it, it also has like a tearaway feel. I don't know if you've ever seen that one, but yep, uh, yep. tearaway and puppeteer kind of go hand in hand in my book. Yep, I, I platinum puppet, uh, not puppeteer, but um, tearaway on uh, PlayStation Vita. Great game too. I uh, use a lot of mechanics, uh, especially with the touchpad and stuff like that. Uh, it was re-released on PS4, right? Yes, this yes, is where you the played unfolded it, version. Yeah, yep. I uh, sold pretty poorly once again on P on uh, on PS4. Um, oh, they released it for free later on too. That's that's what I was waiting for, and they did it. They did it. Yep, I guess. But uh, Major Molecule is still trying to to push another game. That's the last game. It's it's been a while since now. Uh, Dreams mm -hmm. uh, is their next game, but it's still like nowhere to be found. So. Um, Media Monaco is a first party uh, developer for Sony, for PlayStation. So, great developer, but they don't have a great track record in terms of releasing games. So, <laughs> I guess I guess it's uh, a bad a bad move by Media Monaco. Yeah, it could be. Or they, it could be a revival that they've been waiting for. Yeah, but it's dreams. Not sure. It seems cute, but <laughs> it's like a building game and I'm not into like building stuff i'm more into playing stuff you know what i mean yeah i get i get you <laughs> all right so uh ps4 pro price drop confirmed for japan so basically um when you're converting yens into us dollars uh it's like it seems like a 50 bucks 50 uh dollar us uh, price drop which is not too bad um so what do you think it will come to the west it might i mean they they usually I mean since Sony's based in Japan they always start things in Japan then bring it over to the U S I I could see them doing that I would hope that they would do that I mean I don't have a pro myself um but if my PlayStation ever took a a shit you know I I definitely go for the pro instead of just a regular PlayStation so I would hope that they they drop the price you have the... but it might not be for a while though it might not be until they announce a PS five or whatever yeah for sure um and you have the regular PS four the launch PS four. Yeah, the launch PS4 with still an updated working? hard drive. Yeah, still works. Yeah, th that's a quality console um, for sure. Uh, PS4 didn't have any problems to you, um, any issues. I, I don't have the launch. I have the, like the next version, not the slim, but the, the in between the both version. Uh, oh, okay. Pretty happy about uh, the console and uh, everything is working correctly, to be honest. Yeah, I'm... yeah well, the only thing really recently that's happened to me is uh, I've had to elevate it off of, um, I have it in a shelving system and I have to, I had to elevate it off the ground because uh, it was overheating and causing my disc to eject. Oh, I, I have the same problems, games. dude. Yeah, so I have a little fan set up and uh, it's good to go now. It should, it's, it's good. So it's, it, it, do, you, do you have set up uh, horizontally or vertically? Horizontal. Because okay. uh, I have I have this little stand that did make it go vertical, but since the shelving unit is smaller than the other one I had, or was open before, uh, I put it on its, on its side, and then I have that unit under it with the it has two fans on it, so I just kind of power that up whenever uh, I you know I'm playing for a while. Okay, so I have two two advice for you if you you still have the problem, uh, put it vertically, and. Uh, uh, just below the the eject button, there's a like a, a rubber thing in there, and mm -hmm. with the the eat, um, it's moving and uh, the the yeah, button. You, yep. you took it out. Yep. Okay. Okay. So you you probably read the, the same Reddit as me then. Yeah. It's all right. <laughs> yeah. It's it, right. it hasn't it hasn't it hasn't done that since I elevated it and put the fans underneath it. But I did I did check that just to make sure. I even taped my eject button with tape. Oh really? Yep. Uh, so it doesn't like uh, I, I I'm just ejecting the disc with uh, my controller from now on. I said huh. fuck the eject button, man. You're not <laughs> gonna screw me. Like uh, sometimes I was playing a game and it was ejecting the game, 
and I lost mm-hmm. all the the progress. You know what I mean? Yeah, oh, yeah. That sucks, man. It was happening to me for uh, Call of Duty, and I was like, I ain't having this. Yep. <laughs> yeah, I ain't having this shit. <laughs> yeah, that that's really frustrating. Um, I was moving my PS4 a lot before when I was recording on my old office. And um, yeah, every time I plugged it back in, maybe because it was moving and stuff like that, the eject button is really sensible. Is that a word? Sensible? Probably not, right? <laughs> I don't think you're using it in the correct term, but... Okay. Okay. Sensible is a word. <laughs> is a word, but not, not like... You, you know what I'm trying to say, right? Yeah, yeah. It's 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 very touchy, you would say. Touchy, sensible. Uh, what, what, what's sensible? Sensible means that you're like level-headed. You okay, know, you have a, that that, you have mean, a that makes no sense then. Makes no sense. <laughs> <laughs> but I understand, like, because it is a sensor, you know, on the on the machine you just press or touch, technically. Yeah. You know, it's just, it's a little touchy. You know, it, it, sometimes it thinks it senses something when it's really just nothing. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, sensible is a uh, is sensible in français, in French. So that, that oh. this is why. Yeah, yeah, it's actually a French ah, word. I'm fucking up. Some, uh, might be tired. some French at me. Yeah. Why not? You want to continue in French or? Uh, je uh, vous ai so I don't know. That was a poor attempt right there. I I I don't know French. I I know a little bit of Deutsch, but uh, no French socius. All right, all right. I'm gonna stop right there. That, uh... <laughs> all right. Uh, so next news, excellent JRPG. I know you're not a huge fan of JRPGs. Uh, for all the fans out there. Uh, I played, um, it's Legion of Heroes, like it's like a little collection, so it will include Trails of Cold Steel 1 and 2, it's confirmed for PS4 in the West, I played the first one on my beautiful PS Vita, I absolutely love the first one, it's a lengthy uh, RPG though, I expect like 100 hours to finish all the game, wow, yep, that, that's, uh, that's, that's an RPG for you. Um, so collection coming in um, on PlayStation 4. Uh, it's confirmed from early 2019. Um, Trails of Cold, Cold Steel 3 has been released in Japan, and uh, Trails of Cold Steel 4, which is, seems to be the final installment in the series, uh, has been released like last week or a few days ago in Japan. So you might expect if the the sales are uh, going doing good in the West. Uh, you might expect another collection, uh, including the third and the fourth installment, for sure. You're telling me that they released the fourth game first? Is that what? Is that what I? Is, is, is this, is, am I reading this right? No, uh, Trails of Cold Steel, which uh, w- was released in Japan last year, and the it says fourth three, which hit Japan. Oh, yep. Ah, uh, okay. Three, I, it's I been a while. It's been a while, but well, it's been like a year or something like that. And the fourth installment, the final installment. Has been released like a couple of days ago in Japan. Okay, yeah, I ever I read that wrong. My I need to get my eyes checked. <laughs> <laughs> no problem, dude. All right, so this is it for this news. Probably have nothing to say, which I totally understand. Totally understand. Um, yeah, I, I looked at the game snapshot and I was like, this has Tim written all over it. Yep, Tim rules. Shout out. <laughs> <laughs> um, Sony canceled PSX 2018 uh, as it looks ahead to next year. So I was kind of surprised, but well, at this point in October, if you have nothing like um, to say about PSX, it's probably canceled. So I was expecting this news, but uh, PSX is always a good time of the year for me. It's right before Christmas, and uh, usually they have like a uh, super cool game to announce. So are you uh, disappointed in this news? I, I kind of am because uh, I think, you know, I, I like to I like to see conventions. I like to see the stuff they put out, and uh, I really like to go to them too. I mean, I went to PAX West last year, and it was really fun. And I'd really enjoy to go to a PlayStation, you know, a PlayStation convention. Um, yeah, for but sure. of course, uh, this I, I I wouldn't have been planning for this year anyways. But I, I would hope that there would be one <laughs> for this year because there's still a lot of stuff coming out this year. You know, there's a lot of stuff we still haven't gotten a lot of. Um, information on you know let's let's see some last of us part two actual gameplay and not just a, a demo version or yeah. you know let's see ghost of tushima in action that's not just a trailer you know i, I you know i want a hands-on feel to some of these games that are coming out relatively soon i mean next early next year uh and i'm sure that they could have had a few announcements too like if you know the new the new psvr bundles they could have waited until playstation you know the convention to announce them who you know but uh oh well you know, it's kind of disappointing, but oh well. 
Um, so Sean Layden, um, I, I love his res response on this. Uh, he, he just said that it doesn't have enough to bring people together in North America to have an event, to have that event. Actually, like they have dreams, days gone. Uh, they have the last of part, the Last of Us Part Two and Ghost of Tsushima that is coming up, but that's pretty much it for the first party studios. So mm -hmm. is upfront and is saying uh, we don't want to set expectation really high and then not deliver on it. So yeah, that that's a pretty uh, good response, I would say. Like if you have nothing to show, just show nothing, right? Yeah, I guess so. Well, let, let's say they do uh, announce the PlayStation Five next year. Do you think that Days Gone will be like a day one release bundle game? Or, you know, maybe Last of Us Part 2 or Ghost of Tsushima? Maybe maybe that's why they haven't put out too much about those games. Even Death Stranding, maybe, in their launch games. could They could be building them up. Yep, Death Stranding might be uh, a good bet. Um, so PlayStation 4 was released in 2015, right? Um, it, it feels like it's been forever. I think it was 2014. Because so, uh, the Assassin's, Assassin's Creed Black Flag and Ghosts were transferable. Yep, okay. So uh, usually uh, Sony, PlayStation, uh, they have a five years cycle for their bundle, uh, for their console, I mean. Um, what's a little different uh, this time around is that the PS4 Pro bundle has been re released. So that mm -hmm. might push a little bit the PlayStation 4 uh, a couple of years. Um, uh, the Last of Us Part 1 uh, was released at the end of uh, PlayStation 3 cycle and uh, they re-release it on PlayStation 4 uh, later on so I think The Last of Us Part 2 is still to be released on PlayStation 4 honestly but uh, Death Stranding might be a good bet actually, it might be a good launch title too to, to launch the PlayStation 5 uh, Days Gone and Dreams and Ghost of Tsushima, probably PS4 still I would say if I had to bet, mm -hmm. but Death Stranding is a good bet, I think, for PlayStation 5. That, that, that PlayStation 5 better have a one terabyte hard drive shipping base because uh, 500 megabytes is That's not, not enough, enough. <laughs> as we will talk about in the next news article. <laughs> yep, exactly. I still have my five uh, gigabyte. Uh, not enough, man. I constantly have to delete stuff. So I'm trying mm -hmm. to, to buy something else like a hard drive, but it's still pretty expensive, man. Yeah, yeah, it definitely is. And I think I've seen like third party like ba uh, backups, but I don't trust those. <laughs> yep, exactly. And you might want to invest in a SSD to you, uh, hard mm -hmm. drive for the speed yeah. of reading and stuff like that. So, but it's pretty expensive to have one terabyte uh, SSD hard drive. So, yeah, it's almost like the cost of the console at this point. So, <laughs> right, yeah. <laughs> All right, so yeah, you, you were trying to segue to the next news. Good try, good try. I um, But Red Dead Redemption 2 will require 105 gigabyte of storage space. That's it, that is absolutely insane. And that's without all the patches too. Mm -hmm. um, so yep, I, I'm not even sure I'll, I will be able to install it, man. <laughs> I think I'll be able to install it, but I'm not gonna be like, I think I'm getting really, really freaking close. To two terabyte. I haven't looked at my memory lately, but uh, when I tried to, um, uh, as a joke, install Destiny Two, I said I had I didn't have enough room to install the whole game, and I was like, "What?" So, uh, so you, know, you, you have two terabytes, right? Slide. Yeah, I have two terabytes. Okay, so that's not too bad actually. If you're playing a lot of games, that's actually an issue. I don't usually do that. Like when I start Spider Man, I start Spider Man and I finish Spider Man. I platinum the game and I delete it after all. Mm -hmm. But um, Red Dead Redemption, there's no end to this game, right? So you always have to, uh, to, to have it on your hard drive ready to go. Um, so there's online a little bit like GTA. You have to, and it's a, big, it's a big download, and it's a big patches download too. So uh, if you want to play, you just have to keep it on your hard drive. Otherwise, you're fucked. It will right. take like one day to download. And games are getting bigger and bigger, like... And they're not putting anything on the disc anymore. It's like you have a 105 gigabyte game, but only 20 gigs is on the disc, and you download the rest. It's ridiculous. Uh, yeah. Uh, yep. They need to. They need to change it up. They need. To, <laughs> they need to put more information on that damn disc. Because yep. I'm. Because I remember when I uh, when No Man's Sky came out, it was a big controversy that the game was literally like one gigabyte on the disc, and then you downloaded the rest of the game, and I was like, What? Well, what the hell? Yeah. 
and yeah. um spider-man uh, i put the disc on uh on my ps4 and i was waiting for like one hour <laughs> For the, yeah. the the file to be transferred, and after the file has been transferred, they install the file. So what's the point of having the disk now? Uh, it's just a giant piece of plastic. Honestly, there's <laughs> just no. Just for the nostalgia. Yep. On PS3, like you add all the data on the disk, so you were saving hard drive, hard space, mm -hmm. hard drive space. Mm -hmm. But now there's no. I might just go digital. I guess. Yeah, there's really no reason to buy a disc anymore unless you're looking to sell the game right after you beat it and get like half your money back. Yep, I guess, but it's still like cheaper to buy digital most of the time. So, the yeah, cash... especially with sales and all that. Yeah. Yep. Um, I was checking Amazon uh, this um, this afternoon, and there's the games are so expensive, man. This is absolutely crazy. In like in on the PlayStation Store, it's like twenty to thirty bucks less than a disc. Uh, on Amazon, so yeah, you have the disc, you can resell it, but you lost like you lost money when buying it. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, it sucks, man. <laughs> Bottom I know, line, I know. I got burned on uh, Godzilla when that came out for the PlayStation Four. I bought that on disc, and I I got about twenty bucks the next day. I returned it, so you lost basically forty bucks. Godzilla, what yeah. what's what's wrong with you, man? That was right. What's wrong with me? Yeah. It's a, it's a bad game. I didn't know that going into it. I thought it was going to be like the classic fighting Godzilla games, and it was just garbage. It was just trash. Yeah. Yeah. That sucks. I, I was expecting more from a PlayStation exclusive, you know? Yeah. Uh, I was expecting much more, and, and it was just a boring piece of garbage. And I was like, well, I don't want to play this anymore. I'll never play it again. And I took it back, and I was like, can I return this? And they're like, no. And I'm like, well, can I trade it in? They're like, yeah, sure. I was like, wonderful. <laughs> wonderful. All right, um, next news uh, is quite interesting. Uh, it explains a lot of things, actually. Uh, player data paints damning uh, picture of Telltale's efforts. So basically, uh, you have a beautiful graphics right in front of me. Uh, the graphics explain exactly, like you have all the Telltale's games in order, and uh, it basically tells you um, the, um, how, how many users have started the game, basically. This is what I'm reading right now. Mm -hmm. um, so the data is tracked across PS4, PS3, PS Vita, Xbox One, and Xbox 360. But it also means that uh, people that, um, like for example, bought the game for PS3 and PS4 are tracked to as two different players on this graphic. So as you can see, the, the first... Uh, I'm talking to you, Yemi, of course, because <laughs> the other person, the listeners don't see the graphics I'm seeing right now. But right. <laughs> Walking Dead uh, Season 1 almost got 300,000 uh, players, different players. And right after that, Wolf Among Us, which we loved, great game, mm -hmm. uh, dropped below one, uh, 150,000 uh, players so right away there was a huge drop in the players base and even walking dead season two is below um wolf among us and after that it just goes downhill until batman which was released free for playstation plus so uh, maybe a lot of players play there uh walking dead season three is a huge it's bombing it's below f uh, fifty thousand people and after that guardians which i oh guardians of the, of the galaxy right yes uh, still below Walking Dead Season 3, uh, Minecraft 2 still below, this one bombed really hard, Batman 2 a little bit uh, higher than Minecraft 2, but you can see the graphics like, they, they should have seen that coming like we talked in the last week mm -hmm. yeah, I think this con kind of confirms everything that we were talking about last week about how the games were getting stale and people didn't really want to play the same game over and over and over again even though I did enjoy Guardians of the Galaxy and uh, the Walking Dead season three was okay. Uh, I, I I definitely felt the drop in quality uh, right after the Wolf Among Us came out. Yep, for sure. And yep, exactly. And this is a problem I was talking last week uh, in last week's podcast. Uh, Walking Dead season one was so good, and they thought that uh, doing the same thing all over again was uh was probably working but it didn't work for them uh, obviously and like you said the quality of the games dropped you it's not just a matter of doing the same thing all over again when the game is good 
Um, but um, yep, this is sad. But at the same time, what did you expect? Yeah, yeah. I feel like if they had, like I said last week, if they had gone, if they had changed the game up a little bit, maybe halfway through, like maybe once they saw Game of Thrones wasn't doing as good and Minecraft wasn't going to boost them back up to what they thought, maybe with the Batman game, they could have gone to like their old style of games where it was more of an open adventure where you went from place to place, kind of like the Back to the Future games or stuff like that. And I, I feel like that might have, you know, revived the series, revived the company a little bit, but instead they just decide, oh, you know, everyone loves those episodic things. Let's just keep doing them. It's like, oh. I don't yep. know. You tell me. <laughs> Look at this graph. <laughs> yep, exactly. Um, yep. And they were working on a lot of different projects too at the same time. So it's kind of hard to see the big picture when there's like five projects at the same time. Um, right. You and never they, know. And they when... were like, they, oh, I'm sorry, they were, yeah. they were releasing like episode one and then you would wait three months and episode two would come out and then you would wait like one month and then episode three would come out and then you would wait five months. It was just, it was very, very strange release pattern. <laughs> Yep, um, and the technical aspect of the games were like glitchy at best. Sometimes, like on PlayStation Vita, um, the game were, was running at like 10 FPS, um, terrible, terrible performance. And I think they touched too much consoles, too too much porting of the same game all over again. Mm-hmm. Um, yep, um, they had good ideas too. They had good ideas, um, like transferring the data between season and stuff like that. But just didn't work out, I guess. Yeah, and like I said, the uh, you know season four of The Walking Dead. I mean, the graphics looked great from what I saw, and uh, it's unfortunate that they waited this long to to change things up. Uh, obviously, you know, they yep. did. <laughs> now they realize that they fucked up, right? Right. Uh, next news is uh, more. Positive, I would say. <laughs> Finally, <laughs> uh, PS4 games with cross console play con. Compatibility. Uh, that's a big word right there. Um, so compatibility. But, yeah, but your English, you know, it's easy for you. <laughs> I have to think about how to say the the, the, the word. Just say it in French. Uh, it's the same thing. It's compa- compatibility. Oh, I still have I difficulty with this word. Not <laughs> sure why. Um, so basically, right now, the only game that is cross console compatible is Fortnite. Mm-hmm. And uh, I heard rumors about uh, Rocket League too, which will be the next game. Um, so Sony were saying that it was difficult. Uh, it was a game to base game to game bases and they had to do a lot of uh, different stuff to to make the, the, the cross console compatibility works between consoles. So not sure if they are lying or not. Uh, not sure how difficult it is. Um, what do you think about that? Well, I never know. There might be certain security risks. They were, you know, in, in in firewalls and stuff like that. They needed to allow for switches to connect to the PlayStation Network for Xbox to connect for computers to connect. I don't think computers, are... but you know, th- there was probably something in there slowing them down. But I I don't think that they're entirely being honest because I think they just kind of caved into pressure in the end uh, with it all like they were probably mapping out like well if we did do it we'd have to do this 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 and this and everyone was like really wanting it and finally they were like all right fine we'll we'll try with one game see where it goes and out of all the games that they could release you know i was uh, obviously fortnite's the biggest game out there right yep. now it's obviously going to be it and for a second game for rocket league i mean it's an older game but it's still played by everyone <laughs> and i think that's a good that would that would be a good next step to get the you know more people onto onto the uh uh, cross play train yep for sure and like uh they are releasing on ps plus a lot of uh big online uh competitive games like friday the 13 and dead uh, uh by daylight uh if they open cross console play for those games like it will explode right there will be more people playing the game uh, more people exciting about the game. So I guess they will work in their favor a little bit, I would guess. But I agree with you. It's not as simple as it looks. Um, but Microsoft did it. Uh, even Nintendo did it. So, Well, Microsoft to PC was easy because they own you know, all the Microsoft computers and all the Xboxes. For they sure, own those. Sure. And I think the Switch was probably pretty easy because... I mean, not like easy, easy, but I think it was an easy way, to, you know, way to cross compatible because, I mean, how much freaking 
how much time do they put into their online servers for the Switch or Nintendo in general? Like, it's never been fantastic. So yeah. I don't think that they had too too hard of a time to just like flip a switch in the back room. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Well, if Nintendo can do it, I guess everybody can do it, right? Yeah, yeah. Even even the uh, the Ouya can do it. it the Ouya, yeah. I remember this. What a flop, <laughs> man. <laughs> you bought it or no? No, no, no. no, no. I just okay. I've watched so many videos about it. Yeah, it's bad. It's, it's bad. Funny. It was a good idea though, but it didn't work out for them. <laughs> uh, the last news of the week, uh, quite surprising about this one. Qu- quite surprised. I mean about this one. Uh, Harry Potter uh, RPG Lead gameplay has found freaking out. So you 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 saw this right? This one right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, so basically, the footage was shared on Reddit by, and wait for it, Vape This Bro, <laughs> who, <laughs> who recorded the footage secretly while in a server group at the mall. So they were at the mall and they were showing something. As far as I uh, read um, his post on Reddit, um, they were showing some uh, secret gameplay, secret footage of uh, Harry Potter, and he filmed it which were not allowed, but mm-hmm. uh, they forgot to sign, to making sign papers at the end of the, the showcase. So uh, he uploaded it on YouTube. I guess it was still legal-ish. Ish, yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, the dude was, uh, it was a non-listed video and got almost 500,000 views on YouTube. Uh, Warner claimed the video, of course, for uh, copyright and uh, infringement. Mm-hmm. But um, as far as I can see, it's an open world Harry Potter RPG with um, with choices that affect the story and stuff like that. Not a lot of details. But um, are you a, a Harry Potter fan, first of all? Me? No, I was never really a Harry Potter fan. I did watch the movies, of course, like everyone. But uh, I was never like really, really into it. But I know that the game, the, not the game, but the franchise still has a huge freaking following. So it was, it was bound to happen that a new Harry Potter game would eventually come out that's not based on, you know, the movies. It's actually, you know, an, it's a single own, its own IP, you know? Yep. Uh, I think a lot of fans would be excited about this one. Um, so it's Warner Bros. Um, the guesses from the fans are uh, from the for the developer of this game would be Avalanche or Rocksteady, which is a huge studio for uh, this kind of franchise. Um, that would be a great studio, actually, to do a great Harry Potter RPG open world game. Yeah, I feel like that, too. Uh, that's a good fit, too. Um, they are the developers behind Batman, right? Yep. They have Rocksteady, uh, Batman, and um, I'm not sure what else they made, but Batman. <laughs> Batman, yeah, that that's pretty much the, the biggest that's game. That's all that matters. Made. Yep, exactly. <laughs> so they have experience with a uh, fran- uh, franchise that already exists. Uh, that's a good fit for them. Uh, they said they didn't want to to work on another Batman game. And um, yep, uh, I guess that's it for the news. That's it. That's it. And oh, I forgot to say uh, PlayStation 2 best selling game. I, I think I reported on PlayStation 2 was the third best selling game of all time. So there's a really? lot of I reporter uh, fans out there. So it's a good fit, I think. Yeah, uh, like I said, I mean, it's still like you still go to a store and there's just Harry Potter crap everywhere. Yep. It's not like a small area. It's not like a small section. It's there. It's in front of you. And it's like, wow, I can't believe this still has such a big following that they they can still sell this stuff and and, and it'll leave the shelves. Yep, exactly. And um, we haven't seen I, I know there's a new book that was released a couple years ago, I guess. But the franchise uh, has not seen any new installments since a lot of years. A little bit like Toy, Toy Story. Um, this franchise, not the, the same type of uh, of movies or stuff like that. Mm-hmm. But Toy Story, uh, you can see, you you can go to Toys R Us, and you, there's Toy Story stuff everywhere. But like the last movie is like ten years ago or something like that. So um, there's franchises that never die, just like that. So it's still popular. Yeah, definitely. Ferris drop. Fair at the top. Uh, so on the fair drop today, actually there wasn't too much that came out this week. Mm-hmm. Um, there was there was there was two big drops, um, but everything else was just kind of smaller. Or I didn't care about like you know, WWE. No, uh, not to try to throw shade at people who like WWE games, but uh, not my type of thing. 
Um, but the first off, we have Assassin's Creed Odyssey, which is the follow-up to last year's critical hit, uh, Origins. Uh, I haven't finished Origins yet, so I want to finish that before I play this game. Um, but this game, uh, Odyssey doesn't come out until the 5th, unless you get the special edition, which came out today. Yeah, that sucks, um, man. And in Assassin's Creed Origins, you, it's an epic odyssey. Oh, I'm sorry, not Origins. Assassin's Creed Odyssey mm -hmm. is an epic odyssey of a legendary Spartan hero. You forge your own destiny in a world on the brink of tearing itself apart. Your choices matter in this game. Uh, and I was talking to someone today in the comic book shop I go to, and they were saying that from the get-go, things start to matter. So that's interesting. That's a new thing that Assassin's Creed hasn't done yet. Uh, yep. Apparently, I, well, this game builds upon all the gameplay and stuff that Origins was was kind of changed the Assassin's Creed franchise to. Uh, you can be a female or male protagonist, which makes sense because the last game that the developers did, you know, that these developers did was Syndicate, and there was a female and male protagonist roles in that one too. So I, I, I understand why they did that. Also, you know, gender equality is good too. And uh, hey, this this game has actual ship battles. It brought back the ship battles. So uh, you can you can pilot uh, pilot you can you can uh, captain your ship and uh, wreak havoc on the open seas. So I think that uh, they took a lot of the criticisms they got from Origins and they kind of just flushed it out for this game. I'm really excited for it, but like I said, I really do want to finish Origins before hopping into this one, even though this one takes place before Origins. <laughs> yep, <laughs> kind of confusing um, timeline, but you know. Yeah. <laughs> um, I'm currently playing Black Flag, a great, great game. I would say uh, it's quite old at this point, but um, quite. I, I enjoy the game. Uh, the, the 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 high point of this game is the like you said, the ship, uh, moving the ship and attacking other ships. That's absolutely awesome. I played a little bit of Origins at a friend's house. Um, to me, it was different, but like the core of the game was still the same. Like I, I skipped like three or four games and. It still feel like a, an Assassin's Creed, a old school Assassin's Creed. Yeah, there's numbers and the equipment is like, it's like it's more, more RPG. It's, yeah, it's, it's more, more RPG exactly. More and uh, what a fucking shady business to charge people. Like it's twenty bucks more, right, to play the game a couple of days in advance. Is that it? Uh, if you get the version that has the season pass included, that's how you get the uh, the, the day the you know the. The early access, pretty that, much. I'm that sucks, man. So you have to be on board with the game until it's dead, pretty much. You're getting the season pass. Yeah, exactly. And for people like us, like um, YouTubers and streamers, getting the game a couple of days in advance is really important for the traffic and stuff like that. Um, I would be really interested to see the sales of this game because I don't see nobody playing this game so far. Uh, we talked about it a little bit in the Discord server, but otherwise, I have not seen this game anywhere on YouTube, not even in my recommended videos. So hmm. I'm not sure about that. Um, I'm sure it will do just well, just good, I guess. But um, I'm, I'm sure it'll do fine. I mean, there's people like me who are just fans of the franchise who get all the games. This is the only one that I've kind of been waiting on, or I'm going to wait on uh, for, for a sale or something like that, because I am still playing through Origins, like I said, but... I mean, everything you say is correct. You know, like it still has that same feel. It still has that same basic storyline of you know an assassin. Um, and I, but I think that the things they've changed with Origins will really change up the gameplay in Odyssey and games in the future. Like there's, you, it feels more like a Souls like game with the combat. It, it, it is cool. more involved than just holding down the O button and blocking everything that comes in your way. You know, there's like perfect dodges and perfect parries and stuff like that you can do. Uh, and a lot of the story elements have been improved. It's not just, it's not just about the future anymore. It's, it's about the past uh, and, and things are shaping up pretty cool. Well, pretty well in, in origins. I still don't know why they keep trying to force in the future stuff. It's obviously been a question mark on a lot of people's brains ever since Desmond uh, ripped out of the series. Um, so I, I feel like they might be going in a better direction because we're doing less in the real world and more in the past. You're doing things that you want to do, uh, even though you know Assassin's Creed will always have those missions where you just follow someone around, where you go in somewhere sneakily and try and, and take everyone out before raising an alarm or anything like that. It'll always have those missions because those are the staples of the game. But I think that they're really improving on things like, you know, the the there, there's all, this whole new thing from Origins where you have you know the more chaos you cause 
you know, bounty hunters will go after you, kind of like in Black Flag, where, uh, you know, if you if you do a lot of damage to British ships, they'll send out pirates to go get you, you mm-hmm. know, hunters. Um, so I think they're really doing a better job with the, these newer games, even though they're still kind of churning them out because, you know, it's only been a year before, since Origins. Uh, I feel like they should still keep that two-year development cycle, but, you know, two, a year between games because, yeah. like, I don't know. I, I, I haven't played Odyssey yet, so I can't say the quality is better or worse. I've just seen reviews and watched reviews that are non-spoiler reviews, and they've said that it is a better version of Origins, but I'm going to not... You know, that, that's not me saying it. I want to play the game and then give you an opinion on it. But so far, everything I've seen has been an improvement from Origins, and um, I, I think it really, you know, coming from Unity, Syndicate, Black Flag... They've really improved the game tenfold, and it's made me want to play it again. You know, I, I, after Syndicate was done, I was kind of burnt out. But then Origins came back, and I was like, "Wow, this is actually pretty good. <laughs> this is this is actually a game I want to play again." Yep, for sure. Um, I'm I'm pretty sure it will be a great game, great reviews and stuff like that. But I I feel like for a big series like that, at one point in time, you have to do something different, right? You you have to elevate it. The, the series to a new point. I, I feel like the, the series has been stalled and now they're trying to bring something new with the, the story switching, the story choices, because the, the story so far, in Black Flag at least, it's pretty good, right? Pretty good story. Uh, voice acting is stellar. Um, but does the story really matter um, since Desmond died pretty much in Assassin's Creed 3? I don't think so. I think that was a mistake to to make Desmond die, honestly. Yeah, they've uh, you know it's it's Ubisoft. They make strange decisions with their stories, and uh, you know I I think that they're trying to redeem themselves and try and get a new character in there who's going to be the next Ezio or the next Desmond, but they they haven't gotten there yet. Uh, but I think that they're getting close to having a new trilogy for a character. I think we're getting really close to that point because. The Origins guy is cool, he's fine, but he's not one that I could see a franchise around. This guy, on the other hand, from what I've seen from gameplay and stuff like that, he seems pretty cool. Spartan, uh, uh, yeah, he's badass. Yeah, for the sure. Spartan stuff. So I, I could I could see a new like Assassin's Creed, like there was Assassin's Creed 2, then Brotherhood, then Revelations. I could see another trilogy coming very soon with the same veins of, of Odyssey. But we'll see, we'll see. We'll see, we'll see. Uh, next up is <clears throat> Astrobot Rescue Mission, kind of a 180 from Assassin's Creed uh, <laughs> Odyssey. Um, but this is a, like I was saying before, this is a platformer VR game that was developed exclusively for the VR. Uh, you take control of a captain bot and you go on an epic rescue mission to save your fellow bots who are dispersed all over space and time. It was originally uh, kind of like a concept in the PlayStation VR Playroom game. Yep. Uh, except this one doesn't have co-op, uh, but you and you use the PS4 gamepad with this one. Okay. Um, I have I've seen minimal gameplay of this, but it does it does have a, like a knack feel to it, um, or look a look to it. Uh, basic attacks, basic jumping, and stuff like that. Uh, you use the VR to kind of see around. Uh, different landscapes. It looks kind of cool. I don't think I'm going to get it right away at least, but it it looks like a cool game. I was never really a fan of the the, the robot dudes, <laughs> but uh, you never know. Maybe maybe this game is a step up. Yep, for sure. Um, I'm going to probably buy the PSVR soon. Like my girlfriend, my girlfriend uh, at dinner told me, just buy it. I said, oh, okay, <laughs> I'll buy it. Uh, this is the type of game I would like to try uh, first experience in VR. I feel like yeah, this I is feel a- like it would be a good yeah, a good intro into VR. Like I've already listed out all my favorite VR games, but I think this would be a good introduction. See how much you can handle with the motion and stuff like that. Yeah, for sure. Like not jumping into Resident Evil 7 right away, trying something <laughs> yeah. smoother a little bit. I'm not prone to like uh, motion sickness and stuff like that. I don't think so, but I never tried it. So um, I didn't think so either, but uh, then I tried playing that Riggs game and uh, almost threw up on the freaking floor. <laughs> oh yeah, oh yeah. So not, good- no, no Riggs for me then. A good starting point for the motion stuff is the Until Dawn R- Rush of Blood game. Yep, because you're on this, like a roller coaster. This, yeah. Good. Yeah, that's a good starting point. The Batman game's a good starting point. It's just a basic game. It's not very long, but it kind of teaches you 
kind of how the game works and how your motions work and how far you can extend your reach for the camera to see you. Yeah. Uh, and then, of course, my favorite, the OG, uh, Shooty Fruity, is always yeah, a, I saw a, your live stream. a fun time. I was lurking in the live stream. I, well, yeah. thanks. You, you live streamed this one, right? Yeah, Shooty Fruity, I've, I, I live streamed a lot. Yeah. It's, it's, it's a game that I keep coming back to. Uh, it's, it's amazing. I'm, I'm actually lurking a lot in your streams, but usually with my phone, and I freaking hate to type with my phone. Uh, I'm old school in this one. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm usually lurking. I, I, I should say I, at least. At least you know I'm there, right? <laughs> I, I, I can sense your presence, oh, much like man. the Emperor. That is so sweet, man. <laughs> All right, next up is Fist of the North Star Lost Paradise. And this is a anime game. Yep. Uh, and it's the new chapter in the uh, Hok Hokuto Shinken saga. You are a master of martial arts named Kenshiro who demolishes enemies from the inside out with dozens of brutal techniques. Uh, like I said, it's a, th it's a third person fighting game. You plow through weaker enemies to get to like boss characters. It's sort of like Dynasty Warriors. You kind of, kind of fight through weak guys and, and, and capture things. It, it, it's interesting. It's a full price game. Uh, I'm not sure if it's worth it, but, uh, you know, that's up to you to decide. Uh, yeah, I saw this game. It's a long running franchise. Um, never played it. Sounds okay, I would say. <laughs> yeah, from the gameplay, it didn't look like something like it didn't look like a 2018 game. It kind of looked like something from the PlayStation 3 era, to be honest with you. Yep. Um, Freaky Awesome. We already talked about this last week. It comes out on the 4th, which is the day that the podcast will be uploaded. Oh, so good. make sure you check that out. Uh, and if you want to go back to the last episode and, and hear us talk about this game, it looks like a really cool game. And, and, and it's a co-op game. And you, you gain mutations by just picking up stuff that you shoot off of your enemies. So it's, it's pretty cool. I, I'm excited for it. I, I really want to pick up this game and play it tomorrow. I didn't know they were releasing games on Thursday, too. I don't know. It, it, we've had some weird releases. We've had some weird release dates these few these past few weeks. Uh, because uh, I got a free key today from a developer, and they, they said that the game was releasing, like, tomorrow. And I was like, really? On Thursday? <laughs> that seems weird, right? Uh, it is but, weird. It's not the norm. Yep, exactly. And it seems like a bad day to release a game. But it does. Friday is, for me, Fridays are worse, actually. I, I like oh, Tuesdays really? and Mondays. Uh, Nintendo release all their big AAA games on Fridays, usually, and uh, mm. just before the weekend. And sometimes I don't get the, the, the game in the mail, so um, <laughs> I cannot play it for the weekend, and I'm mad, and I'm sad. Uh, so I, I like Tuesday, Tuesday actually. Yeah, Tuesday's a good, good day. Gives you something to do the rest of the week. Yep, exactly. <laughs> uh, next up is Mega Man Eleven. Yeah, uh, and this yeah. is the newest entry in this iconic and classic series that blends the classic, challenging two D platforming with a fresh, new look with three D character models, uh, new visual style. Uh, hand-drawn environments in the background beautiful um there's a new like gearbox you can use which will slow down time or give your weapons a boost for a short amount of time uh so they're trying to change things up a little bit it runs pretty much exactly like you would expect a mega man game to run it's it's challenging it's difficult and the boss fights are brutal and and they require a lot of luck and skill combined um, and I've gotten past Blockman and Acid Man so far, and let me tell you, it's been one hell of a ride. <laughs> it's it's a very challenging game, but I, it's really enjoyable to play. It definitely still has that classic feel to it, even though it looks newer. Um, and it, it's fun. It's a fun. It's a fun game. Yep, uh, for sure. I played the demo on the on the channel. Um challenging game um you have to get used to the slow motion and uh double i don't know how they call it double something um i saw quite a bit of the game in a Ryu car <laughs> twitch channel today um he got the game yesterday i finished the game in one go um and he was speed running the game and that motherfucker finished the game in like one hour and 
like speedrun the whole game in one hour and got the game yesterday. This dude is a is a master, man. Uh, especially in uh, platforming games like this, uh, I love him, man. I love this yeah, dude, especially for like a new new levels and stuff like that new designs yeah. ah man, dang i don't know you have like a special ability to uh, analyze really fast uh a level and like finding routes and stuff like that is is really good at that uh platforming uh platformer games for sure one of the nice. best i know at least yeah sounds like it um next up and probably last i i don't think there's anything else that you really need to go over but next yep. up is party crashers it's been out on this on Steam for a little bit, but they're finally putting it out to the PS4. And this is a fast-paced battle racing game with a retro futuristic aesthetic. Kind of looks like an 80s futuristic kind of vibe. And it's for one to four players. You race around on a track, and the last person alive wins. Uh, you have over 50 included game modes and, and an almost endless customization options. Uh, Party Crashes is just it's just plain fun. It's out of the box. It's 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 not the norm. And it just kind of lets you create your own fun. I, I think it's a cool little party game. Um, it's it's couch co-op, I believe. Or is it online? I'm not sure. I'm not sure if it's online or not. I think it's only couch co-op. Yeah, I think so. Uh, otherwise, you would say uh, online one for player or something like that. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it looks like a cool, neat little concept. Um, I, I only saw the racing game, so I'm not sure how many more game modes there are. But it says it's a fast-paced battle racing game, so... I would guess that the the fifty other modes are just all races. <laughs> Not sure. Oh really? Yeah. That's weird. That is. And weird. Uh, yeah, that's pretty much it for the drop. Well, only other things that really released of note: uh, the first ever, the first, the first table tennis game for VR released, uh, and of it's course. called Racket Fury. Of course. Uh, definitely an interesting game, <laughs> I guess. <laughs> but... And of course, WWE 2K19 released. Uh, never liked those games. Played one of them back in like 2017. I was I was done with it after one one go. Yeah, uh, but that's it. That's that's the third to drop. But uh, let me tell you more about uh, Valtteriian Arc Hero's Cool Story. Uh, no, Please tell me. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> that was I'm kidding. I don't know anything about this game. Cool art style too. I don't know anything about it either, so we're on the same page. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so the topic of the show, it's been, uh, it's been a great show so far. I uh, really enjoyed the conversation. Uh, 50 minutes, though. A lot, lot of madmen in the comment section, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> I guess so. <laughs> um, I ate, just a, a little like sighting. I ate when someone in the comment section just say, like, nice stream on my podcast. I'm I like, that. really, dude? Like you, you're clicking on my video. You're probably liking the video, and you say nice stream because probably because of the length of the video is assuming that it's a stream. But man, I hate that they are destroying my analytics, and um, it doesn't help at all. And I'm contacting each of them uh, privately to say like, stop doing that, man. You don't have to do that. Just go away, man. Mm -hmm. I don't want you on my channel. Uh, probably people that wants. Um, uh, support back or something like that, but I'm not that type of YouTubers, you know. You have yeah, those two, right? I, I, yeah, I, I get those two. Um, they, usually it's just like a two word thing, like nice fit or something like that, but they've been coming up as spam now on my channel, and I will type to them through chat, not through like anything. I'll, I'll just comment back to them uh, on their comment. I'll be like, hey, you're coming up as spam. If you keep doing this, you're probably going to get terminated. And of course, they don't check their notifications. They don't check anything like that. So they're probably never going to see my my comment. Um, but you know, I'm trying. You know, I, I you know, if, if you if you care enough to click on my video and type two words, uh, you know, at least read what I respond to you with. You know, yeah, exactly. It could, but it could save your channel. I'm contacting them directly on Twitter or Facebook or something like that. I'm I'm next step now. Yeah, I'm not going that far. Yeah. If, if they want to get spam and blocked and terminated, they can do that. Uh, I don't care. <laughs> As long as like um, my conscience is clear. <laughs> yeah, of, of course. I don't want to help them. Uh, honestly, I just want them to stop. You know, it doesn't make sense. It doesn't bring any feedbacks. It doesn't mean okay. I'm done. Yeah, I'm done about that. <laughs> it makes me mad, tangent. man. Because yeah, I, I can tell it makes me mad too. It's it's not it's 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 horrible. It, I'd rather have someone enjoy the video than just click on it for a second and click off. Yeah, for sure. And like my Super Mario Maker video, like the last one, it's a two-hour recording. 
um, video. And after that, it's a three hours uh, editing video. So it's a five hours work. It's, um, it's a lot, a lot of editing, a lot of work. And when someone stopped by my video and said like, nice stream or something like that on my Super Mario Maker video, it just make me mad, man. Mm. I'm just mad at them for that, but it's all right. I'm still happy. Yeah. yeah. So the topic of the show is our top five favorite platinum trophies. So it's not our hardest trophies. It's really the, our favorite uh, for different reasons, uh, platinum trophy that we got. So right now I have 123 platinum trophies. What about you, Yemi? Uh, I am, um, I'm at oh, 80 something, right? Yeah, I don't like have your 80... profile in front of me, but oh, 83. 85. I'm at 85. 85. Yeah. No, that's not too bad. That's not too bad. Yeah, it's... bulk of them I got in like two months because I, I went hardcore into it and uh, I had to stop. I had to stop. <laughs> My mental health was not good enough for that. Um, so do you want to start? Sure. I'll, Are I'll we start. doing a standard top five or just throwing the, the, the games out there? I, I would say just yeah, no, I don't know. I didn't really, I didn't get like a top five. I just no, have my five neither. favorites that I've done. So, okay. Uh, yeah. All right. So the, the, the first one for me is uh, called Guitar Hero Live. <laughs> and this is my most yeah, rarest course. platinum trophy. Uh, it has a 97% uh, clear rate. It's ultra rare. Uh, unfortunately, the game will be undoable. Once the servers close down, because a lot of the trophies have to do with the live stuff, which is the online portion of the game. Yeah. Um, and uh, there was there was a lot of fun trophies. Uh, it definitely was able to show off my skills with the plastic instrument by getting the hundred percent done. <laughs> um, but there was also one for doing one million strums, which almost broke my sanity. But strum is um, playing game. without the notes, right? No, 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 no. It's just a regular just. I mean, technically, yeah, but uh, you know, any strum is is like going up and down with the with the strum bar is 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 registered as a strum, and they don't count until the song ends. So if you leave during a song, anything that you did in that song will be deleted. They won't they won't record. In one that. million, one mil. It, it's harder than it sounds. Uh, I started that trophy, grinding it from the day one on the game and it took me uh until 2016 to uh, which is the next year to get the trophy and you were playing a lot probably i i played this game every day for a while it was just it's such a great game and i really wish that they were still supporting it and putting stuff on it but halfway through its life they just were like well we're done with this you know we got we got our paycheck but it's it's really a it's a it's it's new it's refreshing I relearned how to play this type of game because there's, you know, the three buttons on top and three buttons on bottom. And yeah, uh, it really helped to know how to play guitar to play this one. Most of the other ones, you know, you really don't need to yeah, because you're moving your hand, right? Yeah. Yeah. This one's a little bit more. It feels like you're making chords instead of just tapping buttons. <laughs> yeah, exactly. All right. That's a good that's a good one. That's a, a great one to have, actually. And it will go down in rarity too, uh, because the the online will be closed. So, mm -hmm. uh, good one. That's uh, I'm proud of you, man. Well, thank you. <laughs> uh, my first pick is Velocity 2X. Uh, this is totally my type of game. Uh, it's ultra rare, 1.50 percent. Um, so basically, Velocity 2X is like you have a little ship, and it's vertically. Um, a little bit like 1943 on the NES, something like that. And when you, you enter a door, uh, it's a side-scrolling uh, game and you have to be really fast and you have to be perfect in every stage. There's 50 stages and uh, a lot of them are really technical. Even the, the latest stage, like the, the last one and some of the last one, uh, you're controlling two ships at the same time with uh, one in uh, with uh, the different sticks. So it's really hard to control. Uh, my 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 brain wasn't like working correctly during those stages. <laughs> um, so the the artist is probably to gain fifty perfect medals. Um, perfect medals means that you completed the game in uh, a speed run mode, so without slowing down while collecting everything in the stage. Uh, this is the only way you can uh, achieve perfect medals. So uh, quite rare. Uh, it was 
uh, free on PS Plus, though, if I remember correctly. So th yeah. that might be why uh, the Platinum is so rare. It's not that tough. The first one was uh, way harder, in my opinion. But it's a nice one to, to have, for sure. And uh, great game, too. That's the most important thing. Yeah, super fun. Uh, really entertaining. Yep. You, uh, you play this one, right? Yes. Uh, I didn't Platinum it, but I, I did play a lot of it. <laughs> yeah, that's a tricky one, for sure. Go ahead. Uh, yep. So my next one, I was debating between Call of Duty Classic and uh, Modern Warfare Remastered because they're both kind of similar in difficulty. But the hardest one in the Call of Duty series is definitely the Call of Duty Classic game for the PlayStation 3. Uh, simply because in veteran mode, there's no health drops and there's really, there's like barely any checkpoints. Um and the hardest thing is, like, if you restart a checkpoint, you start with as much health as you had when you got to the checkpoint. Oh, man. And usually it doesn't save your progress if you have less than, like, 20% health remaining. Um, but this one was just a... It, it was intense. Uh, it was six days of hard work, but I have memorized these levels from when I was a kid, and it was easier for me to go through them. Uh, I went through on Veteran first, so I could get that out of the way. But you have to play through the game a total of three times on each, once on each difficulty to get the trophies unlocked. And I know that there are ways to, you know, just unlock all the trophies automatically with someone else's save or with an, uh, you know, uh, yeah, that, that's save. cheating too. Uh, but it's yeah, that's cheating one and two. You know, it makes me feel better about myself because I got through them, and it shows on the list. Like it, you, you can see like each, t you know, when I got the trophies was when I completed that level. And I'm really proud of this one because I did it legitimately and I didn't kill myself. <laughs> yeah, for sure. And PSN profiles now have, uh, as you may know, probably uh, have a, a system to detect um, reporting trophies and detect um, save files and stuff like that. Pretty elaborate mm -hmm. stuff. Uh, so I wouldn't like suggest doing anything of the sort to unlock trophies automatically because you will get flagged and removed from the website if that's your thing. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> Also, of... there were yeah, there go were ahead, go ahead. Uh, there were trophies for completing missions with only the pistol, with only melee attacks, with only grenades. I mean, it was it was a tough one. It was definitely one that um, I wouldn't recommend to a, a beginner. <laughs> yep, uh, for sure. Uh, you are a veteran too, so in Call yeah, of Duty, of. I mean. Oh yeah, in Call of Duty, yeah. Um, next one for me is Rogue Legacy. Uh, Rogue Legacy is a roguelike, uh, randomly generated um, side-scroller game, uh, pixelated. Um, this one, it's a tough one for sure. Uh, it's sitting at 2.94% right now. Um, the only thing, uh, most of the trophies are, are quite easy to get. Um, when you die, basically, you uh, keep your cash and you upgrade your character. Uh, so each time you enter the dungeon again, uh, you're a little bit more, um, you have more strain, more defense and stuff like that, more health. So it's a matter of playing the game a lot and being good at the game and uh, knowing the patterns of the enemies. Uh, the only thing uh, separating a lot of players from the Platinums are the remixes boss. Uh, I thought I, I talked with someone about this game today. Actually, uh, he was asking for advice because he saw that I got the platinum trophies. Uh, there's no advice. Uh, I'm gonna send you the link, dude. Um, so I, I won't respond to you, but I'm gonna send you the link. Listen to this. Uh, Remax says there's no trick to the um, to the bosses. Just just have to learn the pattern and be good at the game, uh, basically. And after you do all the the, the, the remixes boss, uh, you finish the game. And after that, there's one last trophy that is quite annoying. Uh, is playing the game over again, but with less than 15 uh, die, uh, death, I mean. Mm -hmm. uh, and we, without using the architect, the architect is locking the map. So the map is always the same, but the rooms and the secrets always changing place because it's randomly generated. So um, the architect locks your map. So once you uh, go back into the dungeon, a lot of the map is already discovered, but you cannot use that. And less than 15 uh, deaths is uh, manageable, uh, especially if you use your uh, cloud save or something like that. So if you're not uh, happy with your run, you can always restart. So it's a lot of uh, trial and errors and knowing the patterns and stuff like that. But that, that's totally my kind of thing. So really mm -hmm. love this. But, you know, I was proud of this one. 
Yeah, sounds sounds like a cool one. Yep, that's an awesome game, man. That's probably one of the best game I played on my PS Vita. I love it. Uh, the next one for me is For Honor. Um, oh, great! And this this is one that takes a while because uh, the game run the multiplayer runs on a, a system. So like every every two weeks is a new battle. Every month is a new war and every like two months is a new campaign uh so you have to literally wait at least three months to get one of the trophies in the game that's cool that's cool. um but it was really it was i mean people like the shit on this game a lot and i really really enjoyed this game i thought it was like a really cool concept you know you you, you would block in a certain direction and and swing in a certain direction on in three different directions it kind of felt like an a, a, a elevated version of like um uh, uh, pa- rock paper scissors at times but it was just a really fun game and i really enjoyed it but throughout its life short life i should say um a lot of the people who weren't really good at the game left and just pretty much the only people remaining are like the people who are like super good at the game and you cannot beat them so by the time i got done with the platinum and i was just playing for fun uh, people started to, I started to see less and less of people who are lower ranks than me or the same skill level as me. And I was being matched with people who were way better than me. So unfortunately, uh, the game died out for me personally. But a lot of these trophies were kind of difficult to do. I mean, getting through the campaign on the hardest difficulty was hard enough. Um, luckily, I had someone to play the co-op with. Uh, shout out to Nick. Um, and it was a lot easier to do with someone else because you could revive each other. And the final mission, like the final boss, kills you in one hit on the hardest difficulty mode. It's it's ridiculous. Um, and a lot of the games centered around online trophies. Uh, one of the hardest ones is getting kills from above. And luckily, I was doing 1v1s, and the guy kept running underneath a bridge that I was standing above. And I was like, okay, I'll just kill you again. So I kept doing that, and I got the trophy almost in one match. Um, but I know that it can be a pretty difficult one to do. Plus, there's a lot of like of those ones that are like, uh, get a k- kill an enemy in a one v two situation. Like that's tough enough. There's killing like a bunch of the the cannon fodder soldiers, which can really be a pain in the butt. Can you boost though? It it's difficult to boost. Um, I didn't. Eh, I mean, I don't know. I I did it solo. I did it by myself for the most part, okay. except for the campaign. So uh, maybe it is easier with multiple people. But uh, I I didn't have many friends to play this game with back in the day but it was still like it's still a fu- it was still a fun game i really enjoyed playing it and that's why it's one of my favorite platinums because one you know it, it's got a good rarity to it and two it was just a, it was a fun experience i didn't get i didn't get angry when doing this platinum i w- i just had fun with it yep uh i didn't i didn't even know there was a campaign in there everybody's yeah, the playing online it, yeah it's mediocre the campaign is okay. me it, it, it's that's throwaway why. that's why <laughs> <laughs> Um, the next one for, uh, are you done by the way? Yes. Okay, yes. great. Um, the next one for me, uh, is, um, Final Fantasy 13. I know this game got shit a lot on, uh, especially when it was released because it was not a standard, um, Final Fantasy, quite boring at, uh, in the beginning of the game. Um, but I kind of enjoy the game, um, the trophy list is absolutely garbage though. Uh, I picked this one because it's my first platinum ever. Um, played the game for like more than 100 hours to get the platinum. It was my first one. I have good memories of the grinding too because I did it with a with a friend on the phone most of the time because I'm old school and we are calling each other still, me and my friends instead of texting each other. Um, so the, the trophies, itself are not too bad the only one is uh held every weapon and accessories uh you basically have to grind uh the big tortoise um to get a random item which have a chance of if i remember correctly it's like something like 0.1 percent of dropping and you need that to forge the the last weapon it's been a while but this is what i remember uh correct me in the comment section if i'm wrong uh but it's Pretty close to the to the truth, honestly. Um, so yeah, this one uh, was a nightmare to get. I'm surprised that it's sitting at 8.44%. So there's a lot of Final Fantasy fans out there for sure. 
Uh, there's a lot of Platinum Trophy Owner, which I'm quite surprised actually. This is a grindy, and it's not hard, but it's a grindy uh, Platinum for sure. And I'm mm -hmm. picking Final Fantasy 13 2 at the same spot, because why not? Um, this one had a great trophy list, uh, no uh, missable or anything like that. Really enjoyable, and this one is uh, quite superior to uh, the Final Fantasy XIII, the, the, um, the first part of uh, the series. Um, it's a chill trophy list uh, with a lot of... There's no missable, like I said, and it's a pretty easy platinum sitting at 21.6% uh, right now. And um, really cool, man. The really cool game. I'm not a hater on the Final Fantasy XIII series. I haven't played the third one. But um, I think they are average game, probably like the worst Final Fantasy game, but still pretty good game. So, hmm. um, yep, it's my first one, like I said. So a lot of uh, nostalgia because of that. Okay. There you go. JRPG uh, for you, dude. Yeah. <laughs> I had to sneak one. I had to sneak of one. Course. Understandable. Um, so this is, is this number three for me or four? It's It's four. Oh, it's four. Okay. So uh, the next one is, is Assassin's Creed Brotherhood for me. Oh, yeah. This is my, yeah, this this is my favorite Assassin's Creed game. And I planned this one for my 50th Platinum. Uh, it was It's a fun one. Um, it has a few difficult things in there, like doing the 100% sync on all missions. Yeah, not too bad. Um, which was originally a DLC for the first game, or when it originally came out on PS3. But it's officially a part of the list in the PS4 versions. But I just, I mean, it's just a, I, I love this game. Brotherhood is like my, is the peak of Assassin's Creed for me personally. I really, really enjoy this game. It was just a continuation from two and had all this better stuff in it. It was, you know, it was a fun, but challenging platinum. And I really enjoyed it. Uh, and I, I still love playing this game. It's, it's amazing. And I, I, I wish that more of the uh, games were kind of more like this one, but you know. Okay, Whatever. now, now I, I understand what you're saying. Okay, so Assassin's Creed Brotherhood, I platinum this one on PS3 and it's quite different from the PS4 uh, trophy list. Um, mm -hmm. If you compare both of them, um, they remove all the multiplayer in there. Multiplayer mm -hmm. was a pain in the ass, man. I'm telling you, it was really oh, hard, no. really grindy. and uh, But I think they removed pretty much all of it. I'm checking it right now. But, yeah, the, uh, the remastered versions don't have any multiplayer. They took out all the trophies for it. That's why I like so this lucky, one. so man. Because I, I, I played it on PS3, but I never did. I think the multiplayer, I, I, I just I was like, this multiplayer sucks. I'm not going to play this. I did but it. But when it came out on PS4, I was like, yes, this is amazing. I love this. I they did took it, out the multiplayer. All that's, of them. That's, that's props to you. That's, that's good. All of them. Uh, it's an ultra rare uh, platinum because of it. Mm -hmm. um yeah okay this is a pretty good list actually this is a pretty cool uh trophy list for the ps4 version ps3 version though it's totally sucks man one of the worst <laughs> lists ever kind of like kind of like metro last light the ps3 version was full of just just the shittiest trophies but the ps4 version on the other hand had all they took all the bs ones out and still had the ch enough a cha enough of a challenge but you know it, it's still you know the ps3 version just sucked yep so bad Good for you, dude. Good for you, dude. Uh, I did the hard one, too. You did. <laughs> uh, next one for me is Outline Miami. Uh, I absolutely love this game. Uh, I played a lot. I, I platinum this one on my Vita because it's perfect for a small screen and small buttons and stuff like that. Um, pretty cool list. Uh, there's one trophy which is a problem. It's uh, getting A plus in all the chapters. Um, getting A plus was, if I remember correctly, was to finish the game pretty fast with the eye combo, eye points combo. Um, it was a pretty cool game, uh, gory, uh, violent, the story was amazing, and the soundtrack was absolute, one of the best soundtrack I've heard uh, in any games, actually. It hmm. was really catchy, and uh, I love the art style. Atline Miami 2, I'm pretty close to the Platinum, uh, I haven't played in a while, though. Atline Miami 2, I didn't really like, uh, it's more of the same and it's more uh, the, the stages. What I like about Atline Miami, especially the first one, is that the stages were quite small, tight, and it was not complex. It was difficult, but not complex. Um, the second one uh, expand the, the levels too much. 
Um, there was too much uh, different kind of enemies, too much uh, different weapons. It was too complicated, at least for me. I think a lot of people would agree with me on that. Uh, second game is cool, but not as good as the first one. Um, so 9.42% cl uh, platinum um, uh, per percent. Um, quite surprised because it's a hard platinum for sure. But uh, like I said, when you have a good game uh, and people want to play, and want to collect the platinum. Uh, this is why the, the percentage is so high. Huh. You haven't played this one? I think you'll no. like this one. Yeah, I haven't. I've, I've played. I played similar games like that LA Cops game, but I never played Hotline yeah, Miami. Yeah, LA Cops. Yeah. Remember this one. Yeah. All right. The, the last one for me um, is the only game that I've placed on the first achievers board for. Oh. Uh, I was number fourteen on this one. It was the. Uh, the non VR version of Super Hot, uh, which is freaking amazing. I love the regular version. I haven't played the VR version yet. I really want to though, because obviously it's more of the same. But Super Hot, really freaking awesome. I I really enjoyed this game last. Uh, was it last? Yeah, last year. And it is a very it's a challenging platinum. Uh, there's this whole speed run thing you have to do. There's a no deaths run you have to do, and it's not like you can save and restart. Um, and there's collectibles you need to find, and there's also a few things you have to do, including starting the game between a certain date uh, to get a Halloween-themed uh, <laughs> a special event. But you can just set your PS4 clock. Yeah, you can in, cheese in this one, yeah. Okay. Yeah. But, I mean, this is it's such an interesting game and a cool game, and the trophies were... They looked easy on paper, but when you tried to actually do them, you know, some of those challenges were really difficult, um, even though they all kind of played out the same, you just run through the game with different settings. Uh, those last few that you had to do, uh, there was the speed run, which you had to do things so fast. It was ridiculous. Uh, there was the um, endless modes, which just you get, it's just a pretty much a horde mode. You just kill a bunch of guys and you have to get like a, a thousand eight hundred and eight, or nine hundred and eighty seven red dudes. You have to kill them in endless mode. And I got really good at endless mode. I was, I was. I was really doing a good job at that. Uh, it's it's just it's such a great game, such an awesome game, and like I said, it's the only one that I've placed in the top fifty for first achievers, and it's definitely one of those ones that I, would I do it again? Maybe not, but I would definitely play it again. <laughs> yep, uh, really unique, uh, especially the art style. Uh, really digging this one. Um, I'm, tr I'm I'm planning on on, on uh, playing the the VR version when I get the VR for sure. Um, the last one for me, uh, it, it was your last one, actually. It was your last yes, one. Yes, okay. that was my last one. All right, just checking, just checking. Mm -hmm. uh, my last one is Metal Gear Solid 3, uh, the Snake Eater in the HD collection on the PlayStation uh, 3. Uh, awesome game, one of the best uh, Metal Gear Solid um, game out there. Uh, my favorite is probably the fourth one uh, because of the closure of the series, at least uh, the official uh, closure. Uh, the third one, uh, I picked this one. I, I haven't got the, the uh, Metal Gear Solid 4 uh, Platinum because um, people that know the trophy list would understand why. You have to play like uh, eight times the games and stuff, some ridiculous stuff like that. There's a lot of missable too. This one is, uh, there's a lot of missable in this one, but uh, with a guide, um, it's not too bad actually, and the game and the story is amazing. Um, I'm a huge MGS fan, uh, so uh, I needed to to put a Metal Gear Solid um, game in there, and I have that's the only one I have too. Uh, the second one uh, is a ridiculous once again list. Uh, the third one is uh, quite easier for sure, so I go uh, I go for it. So that's pretty much it, man. Yeah, nice nice list. Thanks. Thanks. Uh, the next, <laughs> the next segment is trophies. <laughs> Once again, I haven't thought about it, but I, I guess it's a great segue, right? Yeah, actually, perfect. Perfect. Um, Mega Man Eleven trophy list. Um, seems like a standard Mega Man game uh, trophy list. I mean, there's a lot of easy one. I uh, finished the game in normal mode or order and stuff like that. Um, I'm going into the rarest trophies. Uh, there's Dr. Light's Trial, which I don't know what that means. Uh, you play the game, so probably you could answer some of these questions. 
I, I haven't played much. Okay. <laughs> I don't know what Doc. I think Doctor Light's Trial is like a challenge mode or something like that. Okay. I'm not sure though. Okay. So there's complete the game on Super Hero difficulty, which you you need to know the game to to be able to to uh, to finish the game. I think there's only one checkpoint per stages, and um, you have one life maybe in Super Hero. Mm-hmm. I'm not sure. Um, the hardest trophy, excuse me, the hardest trophies is uh, complete the game on normal difficulty uh, or harder within 60 minutes. So if Ryukar barely uh, finished the game in one hour, uh, good luck, good luck, because it will be a hard one. Um, only five people achieved the, the Platinum so far, but there's a lot of Mega Man fans out there, so I'm not surprised. But uh, cool trophy list, honestly. Yeah, it looks like a, they'll give some people a nice challenge. Um, but there's already there's already been a few uh, achievers, so I guess it's not too hard. <laughs> it's but I guess if you're if if you're a long running person of this, you know, player of the series, I think this one's going to be easier than me jumping into the series on this game. You know? Yeah, for sure. Uh, mechanics are a little bit different too, but it's the same old thing where uh, you you have to know exactly the weaknesses of all the bosses. And stuff like that, and you can like do neat tricks with your uh, weapons in mid stage and stuff like that. Um, so basically, you, you need to know the game one hundred percent to to be able to platinum the game. And there's a few hidden ones that are for um, doing specific things to certain enemies or bosses. So I, I, you know, those those might be a little tricky too. Yeah, for sure. Um, next one and last one, I, not a lot of new trophy lists, uh, at least interesting one. Uh, this one is Assassin's Creed, of course, Odyssey. Is it, is it Odyssey or, or Odyssey? It's Odyssey, right? Odyssey, yeah. I, cool, uh, uh, small fact. Uh, I did a, a whole series of like 14 or 13 episodes of Super Mario Odyssey, mm-hmm. but I keep saying Odyssey throughout the whole series. So yeah, it's uh, close enough. It's low, I guess, but I sound yeah, so I, French when I do some stuff like that, right? I don't think many people would notice. I think I think you're the one who noticed it the most out of everyone. <laughs> yeah, maybe, but now now I'm exposed, right? Yeah, now everyone's gonna point it out. <laughs> <laughs> so the artist trophies uh, seems to be complete all uh, underwater location objectives. I fully upgrade uh, the Adrestia, which is the boat, I think. Uh, on VR yes. subregions is Greece. So basically, uh, finish the game 100%. Yeah, it looks just pretty much the same as uh, Origins. Just a few different random trophies thrown in there. And there's no online, as far as I can see. Reach level 50 is in game, right? Single player mm-hmm. game. Yeah, yeah. Since it's more RPG centered, it, you actually have a level to your character now instead of just unlocking abilities. Okay. So it seems like uh, basic stuff. Uh, I'm not sure if there's any missable. I guess not. Um, yeah, I didn't see any for like collectibles or anything like that. And um, I don't see any which for is the, same uh, the story the too. Game. The branching stories. Uh no, it's probably just major points. You like you. I think it's basic. Every time the chapter's over, you get a trophy or sections. Yeah, over. exactly. Which is good. Good yeah, design. That, yeah, <laughs> it should be a. I mean, it's not going to be quick, of course, but I think it, it, it'll be a pretty straightforward trophy run. Yep, I, I don't mind, uh, like, long trophies. Um, what I mind <laughs> is uh, the, the grindy one, actually. Mm-hmm. But this one, like, you're doing a lot of different stuff, like uh, getting the boat and uh, leveling up and um, doing side quests and stuff like that. So it's not too boring, I feel like. Mm-hmm. I haven't played the game, but uh, it seems like a good trophy <laughs> list for sure. Yeah, I always, always like to enjoy a game that's long because when it's not a good g- or like maybe it's like a grindy thing, you feel every second yeah. pass by when you're doing that stuff. It's like a pain. Mm-hmm. It's like pain. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. So a question from the fans, uh, the subscribers and the listeners. So I'm giving you three choices. And you're going to pick one. We, we need to ask uh, people a question after this one because mm-hmm. we are running out of questions. Right. So uh, if you're listening <laughs> to this up to this point, uh, shoot me your questions uh, on Discord, on Twitter, on Facebook, uh, whatever, wherever. All right. So um, Sony IP that you feel has progressed the most, uh, next generation consoles or... 
Um, Sony taking risk. Well, Sony versus Nintendo, basically, is the third choice. Well, I think we should go with the next generation concerts, console since we've kind of already discussed a little bit about it so far. All right. Um, so there's like two parts to this question. The first one comes from Team Rules, which is well known in the Discord server. Uh, when do you guys think the PlayStation 5 will be released? Will it improve much upon the PS4 graphics or just slightly? Do you think free online will return or will it stay the way it is right now? And the second part, I'm I'm going to do a, a wrap up after that. Don't worry. You don't have to remember <laughs> everything. Uh, it's coming for, uh, from Gaz Davis uh, from PSN Profiles. And I'm just adding a little like a uh, little question there. How do you, um, um, do you think that the, the next console will be digital only? Ah, OK. Yep, exactly. So when do you think the PlayStation 5 will be released was the first question from Tim. I think they're going to announce it next year or, you know, demo it next year and it's going to be released in 2020. All right. I think they will uh, wait a little bit, actually. I think they will probably announce it 2020 and release it 2021. I feel like the PS4 Pro pushed it, pushed the life cycle a little bit. Um, and I'm not sure what they could. And the PSVR too, um, mm-hmm. push a little bit uh, like the technology. I'm not sure exactly what they could do more than now. Uh, maybe like better processing or stuff like that. But um, yeah. I uh, definitely want to see uh, more base memory on the console since games are getting larger and digital is becoming more and more of a, yeah, a favorite sure. thing. And I also, I would... <laughs> Really like to see a VR headset that's wireless. I know that would probably take a ton of battery power and stuff like that, but um, the VR just has so many freaking wires and it's a mess behind my TV. Yeah. Um, But if they could either make the camera, like either make that wireless or make the headset wireless, one of those two things or both. I would, because the the, the freaking camera, that thing. I always lose it behind my TV because it falls over. <laughs> so maybe that's why it doesn't work as well as it used to. But uh, <laughs> but the cameras, like, I feel like that should be something that's wireless. Like, that should be pretty easy to, like, charge, let it charge, and then put it on top of your TV or on top of a bookshelf or something like that, that you where you, wherever you would put it. The VR headset, I can see it being a little bit harder to get, you know, have it have a good battery life. So I can see why that's probably not going to be a thing. But maybe, maybe something like that. Uh, don't. You know, you know it, make sure that the VR headsets for the PS4 work for the PS5 because that is a large yeah, for sure. um, investment to make, especially for a system. And I don't and I don't think the VR is a gimmick anymore. I used to think it was a gimmick when it first started, but then I got my hands on one. I noticed how popular it was and that they're still supporting it. It's definitely not a gimmick anymore. It's it's something that's here to stay for now. Um, and I think that they definitely should make the old headsets work on the newer ones. Yep. Um, and the, the only other thing is like, hey, you know, keep improving your servers for for multiplayer, uh, and 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 try to um, try to bring down the price of your online services. Like, we all know that you're not throwing that money towards your servers. <laughs> yep. Uh, yeah, for sure. Um, it's a, a gold mine basically because they're you're paying for something that is already up and only need maintenance basically. Um, regarding the PSVR, I feel like it's lacking, um, at least now it's lacking processing power. Um, like yours, I have a little box, separate box, right? Yes. So this is the processing power that was, uh, the, the PS4 was lacking basically to, to run, uh, the PSVR, uh, um, perfectly. So, uh, maybe PS5 will have, uh, like better technology, better processing, better RAM, better, uh, hard drive and stuff like that. Better motherboard basically, uh, to run, uh, the PSVR with less wires. And, uh, I don't think battery is a um, huge issue. I'm not sure about that though, but, um, that might be the only thing that keeps the wires in there. Um, otherwise it's just a little box that you plug into your PS5 and, it's working mm. uh, flawlessly, but um, yeah, there's a lot of wires. I saw some unboxing video. Uh, I think it's uh, there's less wires now too. Now that the v- the V2 has been released, if I'm correct. Yeah. Yep, I have the old version, so 
<laughs> I have lots and lots of lawyers. <laughs> and the last question was, do you think it will be uh, the physical games will be uh, a thing of the past, basically? You know, it's, it's very possible. Um, because as we were saying, the disc really doesn't have anything onto it besides from nostalgia yeah, for we talked about disc, this. throwing a disc into the, into the console. I think that it's very likely that they'll just stop supporting discs. They'll, they'll, just, they'll just be digital only. And uh, I know there's a few people who are on the Discord itself that really love collecting discs and going on to the internet and finding rare discs. But I think that's going to be a thing of the past with the with either the next generation or the generation after that. Because I think, uh, like I said, uh, you know, digital is, is is the next best thing. I mean, I have so many digital games; they're not all installed. But you know, I, I if I see a good sale and I you know have a fresh paycheck, you know, I'm going to be uh, buying a, a game that I probably won't play. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but it will take it based on my hard drive. Yeah, for sure. Um, and taking out uh, the disk drive in the, in, in the system itself, like physically, is uh, really appealing to uh, because the, the, the console might be a little slimmer, a little bit like, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Because yeah. it's kind of huge uh, when you take it out. Uh, it's kind of huge, take a lot of place and you have to have a, a separate fan and stuff like that. Just to keep like um, the this the this is not even running in the in the, the console anymore. I don't think so. Everything is installed on the hard drive. It's just a yeah. key basically that you insert into your uh, PS4 uh, to to start a game basically because it doesn't like and uh, from the environment it's not good to. I I feel like everything will be digital from uh, now on. Um, like stuff like GameStop, uh, shop like GameStop, or uh, EB Games here in Canada will disappear, and um, that will be pretty much it. I think it will be digital only, honestly. And I really think that um, I think you mentioned the the the, uh, the SATA hard drives before, but I think it would be a good idea to move away from the disc uh, HDDs hard drives. And move on to the ones that are powered by SD, uh, kind of like SD cards, because um, I've mm. used those in my line of work, and um, everything runs faster on those freaking <laughs> SD hard drives. They're, it's amazing how fast things flow. Yep. So I definitely like if if they switched over to that, I bet that would take away a lot of the load times and stuff like that that plague a lot of games for the PlayStation like Fallout and Horizon and stuff like that that take a while to load and you're just kind of sitting there going, why does it still take this long to load games? <laughs> yep, exactly. And uh, in my new PC, um, it's not a disc anymore. It's like mm -hmm. a, a, a RAM. It's like RAM, right? You insert yeah. it into your motherboard and it's super small and it's uh, more powerful than an SSD uh, basic hard drive. So they might go with this one, but it's really expensive though. You, you have to keep the, the price in mind and Sony doesn't like manufacture those types of things. Uh, they have to, to go with a company like Samsung or something like that, a partnership. So yeah, there's a lot of variables in there. Um, you have to keep the price in mind. We know with the PS3 that it was not a good idea to, to release a console at 800 bucks. And it was a yeah. good idea to release it at 400 bucks. Uh, they 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 fucked um, Microsoft with this one. Um, yep. So um, yeah, that that's uh, that's exciting though. That's exciting. Yeah, definitely. The next segment and the last segment uh, of the show is called uh, PlayStation Memory. Uh, it's uh, I chose this one. Uh, next week it's with it will be yours. Um, <laughs> yep. <laughs> I, I took the first PSP game. Uh, it's called Crisis Core Final Fantasy VII. Um, one of the best uh, PSP game, uh, both in terms of quality and both in terms of um, sales too. It sold 3.1 million Unix units worldwide. Um, it's a sequel to a well-known game to Final Fantasy VII. Uh, it's a prequel, not a sequel, a prequel. Really important. Okay. Uh, it's uh, it said before Final Fantasy VII, and the end of the game uh, is right before the start of Final Fantasy VII. So it's a cool little bridge there from a well-known and well-loved uh, uh, game. Um, it's I focus on uh, Zach Fair, which is a great character actually for the um, for the the, the storyline of Final Fantasy VII. Uh, it's more an action role-playing game. It's not a turn-based uh, RPG game. 
Um, I had a lot of fun with this one. Uh, it's totally fun. Uh, it's super action. Um, it's not. It's real time combat system basically. So you move around. Uh, you you use your spells and stuff like that. So you might actually like this one. Once again, I want you to play a Final <laughs> Fantasy game. But uh, I really enjoyed this one. One of the best PSP game I played. Uh, a lot of good memories. And I tweeted a, a, a picture of uh, my guide, my strategy guide, um, and my game last week, I think. Um, I got a lot of good feedbacks too. So I, I guess there's a lot of fans of Crisis Core. And it's crazy to me that a game that sold so well doesn't have a remake. Uh, they decided to go with Final Fantasy Type-0 for a remake, but it didn't make sense once again, Square Enix. Uh, Crisis Core was a way better choice, and uh, you have Final Fantasy VII in the title right before Final Fantasy VII release. That would be a good idea, but I guess I'm not a businessman, but it seems like common sense, right? It does. <laughs> so anything to add about a Crisis Core? I guess not, right? I like, uh, I like the name Crisis Core. That's pretty cool, right? That's dope. That is I could dope. see that as a, uh, a username for someone. Ooh. I don't know. I just someone in oh, general. Someone. Okay, I, I thought yeah. you, you know someone with the the nickname. No. <laughs> um. So yeah, that's pretty much it for episode eight, a long episode eight of Chronocast. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, thank you again, Team Rules and Agaz Davis Eleven uh, from PSN Profile for your questions. Uh, that was a uh, really good questions. It's always cool to talk about uh, the next console uh, generation of consoles. Uh, it's always an uh, exciting time for sure. Uh, don't forget that you can be part of the show, uh, just like the guys there, uh, by asking questions on the Discord server, on Twitter, on Facebook, uh, pretty much everywhere. Uh, Yemi, where can uh, people reach you? Uh, you can you can reach me on YouTube, Discord, Twitter at Yemi the Ferret, and SoundCloud. All right, I love how you say SoundCloud. You like you sound really exciting about that. <laughs> <laughs> and once again thank you so much for all the feedback the love and the support but not the support from the guys that say that nice stream in the comment section you guys i don't like you but all the other one that give good feedback and support i love you all uh, it's really appreciated and i'll talk to you in the next one see you later guys mm -hmm.